Fellas, it looks pretty right now, but it was 39 degrees this morning. I'm gonna have to get some heat on over at that house. Seems like I just had the junk people here and I'm getting crowded again. Of course, I got some other stuff in the way too. Uh, this is a 20 sear, two ton allied, you know, Armstrong Aries heat pump and air handler and heat kit that I bought uh, back in 2018, right before I had that wreck. Never got around to putting it in, so I think uh, this might be a good place to put it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the air handler on over to the house so I can uh, start figuring out uh, whether or not I'm gonna put it under the crawl space or maybe build a little closet for it. This outdoor unit's huge for a two ton. I think they all had the same footprints all the way up to five ton. Uh, they just got a little taller. Can't tell anything about it back here, but anyway. I'm gonna assume it still works all right. I just put those boxes over it. I'd already opened it at my other house and done away with the cardboard before all this stuff happened. So I just brought it here and covered it back up. I've got the new thermostat for it. And this is a little zone uh, sensor for a, you know, a separate zone. And Got a couple of these old uh, zone panels, which you know, basically, I think they called them damper control modules, but they're uh, they're basically little zone panels. So I think I'll do uh, the two zones at the house. You know, do the bedrooms on one zone and the uh, rest of the house on the other zone. Okay, the return used to be here in the hallway, and like I said, there's plenty of room under this crawl space goes way yonder down there pretty tall uh i want to keep the trunk on this side of the center beam beams right here under this wall because the garage bumps in right down there and so if you're on this side of the beam you can kick out and go on down into the kitchen with some trunk in order to get you know all the supplies down on that end of the house uh, I need more than one return because since I'm going to zone it, I'd like to have, you know, some return air from that end of the house and return air on this end of the house. So I'm going to go around in the closet and show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about putting the air handler right on top of this hole. I could do the air handler as a downflow, make me a piece that goes down through the floor opens up to where I could actually run duck this way and catch all my bedrooms. And then of course the other way and go to the other end of the house. So I'd have two zone dampers on either side of this box I would build down there. The air handler could face that way and I could just cut a hole in the wall here and put me a little closet door on it. And then I could build me two little walls around it in here so that it wasn't in my closet. It would be in a little closet out in the hallway. Now, granted, that's gonna take some room out of my closet, but I'm a, I'm a guy, you know? <laughs> my, my laundry's probably gonna stay in there in the laundry room. Uh, I'll take it out of the dryer and hang it up in there, and probably when I get out of the shower in the mornings, I'll go in there and get dressed, cause I'm just too lazy to carry it back and forth. So uh, I'd probably be better off, you know, having blinds instead of a big closet. I've got the air handler out here. I'm gonna bring it in, do some measuring and look, but I'm, I'm thinking that's kind of what I'm gonna do. You know, of course that takes care of my supply. If I do it down flow, it'll just go straight down through there. So sitting up here somewhere will be where we'll be sucking air in. So I think what I'll do there is go up into the attic, which this is a good spot. There's a ceiling joist and the other one's over here on this wall or right beside this wall. So there's a good opening right there. I could pop up into the attic and then I could put me a return grill in the ceiling in the bedroom here. I could put a return grill on the ceiling in this bedroom, which is gonna to have to have some work anyway. When I jacked the house up, I broke the ceiling. 
and then I could put another little return grill in this bedroom, so they would all be relatively close to the air handler here. So then I would need to get some return air for this end of the house. And I think what I could do there is maybe a return grill up in the corner of this, this big room. And right around here, we could put one up in the corner of this room. And that would give us plenty of return air and we wouldn't have a whole lot of duct up in the attic. It would just have to go from there to here, which is about 10 feet would be the longest ones. Okay, of course, if I do this like I'm talking about, I'll have to turn this thing upside down so the coil will actually flip over down there. But this will actually be blowing down underneath the floor. So I would have to make a, uh, a box large enough to, you know, catch this outlet and go down into the crawl space and do 12 inch out both sides. I'm gonna do 12 inch round. Uh, since I have all the headroom down there, uh, I think round duct will be better. Number one, it's cheaper. Uh, number B, it's got less surface area than equivalent rectangle duct, so you have less losses to the, you know, space as far as, you know, uh, radiant heat going through it. And of course, if the duct perimeter is smaller for the round duct, you'll have less insulation. So, and theoretically it's less turbulence in round duct than there would be in a, a rectangle duct, uh, just cause you don't have all the corners. So, uh, what I'll have to do first though, I guess is get this joist out of the way. And then it'll just be a matter of making me something here. I wouldn't want the unit sitting right down on the floor. If you've ever had to work on a electric heat in a mobile home, you know what I'm talking about. These these downflow things, it's tough to get down there low enough to see what you're doing. So I'll make, I'll raise this duct up above the floor a little ways here. Uh, the other thing you have to do, and these things, when they got electric heat in them, which this one will have, and it'll be right here. So it's pretty close to the floor if you think about it. Uh, yeah, you can see where the cutout is there for it. When you, when you have electric heat that close to the floor, they don't want that supply duct getting really, really hot if something malfunctioned and, you know, catching the floor on fire. So they make in floor kit for these. Uh, I should say they used to make in kit for this. Uh, they've changed the air handler and they've all went to a standard kind of size. So they've discontinued that floor kit. But if you've ever seen one, all they do is make you cut a hole in the floor big enough that this duct will be an inch from the wood. So of course we can build that, no problem. Okay, I'm at my office here this morning waiting on the delivery. So I thought I'd sketch this thing up right quick. Uh, this would be out in the hallway. This will be the wall between the hallway and the closet. That would be the door head or the height. Just trying to see how much room I had to reach up in here. Um, I'm going to hold this duct up a little high on the bottom because I need to put a air temperature, discharge air temperature sensor in. So I'm gonna to try to put it right there so every, all the electronics, with the exception of the damper motors, will be in this closet. So I've kind of roughed out what I would need for my little duct transition here. And then I copied that over here and put some dimensions on it. I'll need one each of these pieces and two of these, and I'll just have to make sure I bend these uh, as bookends so that I don't have, I can't bend them exactly the same or <laughs> they'll be backwards. One of them will be anyway. And then I'm gonna leave an inch at top and bottom. The bottom, I'll just make a, a normal, um, almost like a, a end cap for a trunk duct on the bottom. The top, I'm going to try to uh, sandwich a piece of uh, duct board one inch thick around this and put another piece of metal on the top so that this will all be metal up here uh, when we look underneath here and we'll try to bend some flanges on it so it'll actually set on the solid floor maybe have a drain pan with a hole cut in it uh, it's not the best solution but with down flows you never have a good solution for a drain pan uh, but I'll, I'll see how this works out. I'll get started. I've got to build the duct piece anyway. I'll build it first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll work out these little details on the rest of the uh, support afterwards. 
Okay, this is what I mean when I say you gotta have bookends. I've already made this piece, which is you know, one side, and the little flanges are bent in that way. Of course, if I made this piece the same way, they, it'd be for the same side and they wouldn't work. So this is the outside of this piece, and this is the inside of this piece. So I've got a little scribe mark down through there. I'll bend these little flanges in, and this these two sides will be finished except for cutting the holes. And this little guy, I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Somebody may have forgot to cut the 48 inch piece down to 39 inches before doing his measuring from both ends to uh, do his little angle there. So anyway, no harm, no foul. It'll go together just fine. I'm gonna put plenty of duck mastic on it anyway. That looks more better. That little guy won't hurt nothing time we get it beat together. It'll be strong. I will uh, get started on the the two flat pieces or square pieces or rectangle pieces. You know, the easy pieces. And uh, maybe we can bang this thing together before I, my delivery comes. Okay, there's the mostly finished product. Like I said, I got to cut a couple of holes here. But first, I've got it upside down right now because I'm going to make a bottom for it. I could either put 4S lock around there uh, and a couple of screws, or what I may do is just go ahead and bend uh, bend for drives on two sides and do S locks and drives just like a normal piece of duct. That way, if you ever needed to take it off to, I don't know what you'd need to take it off for. Let's say maybe we get a bunch of water up in it or something and want to replace that bottom panel. It might be easier. So I may go ahead and just try to bend a, a plate things for drives and make me a normal uh, end duct cap for it. Okay, so I, I bent my little edges for the drive, put on a couple of pieces of edge. So we need to see what size to make this guy. And our one dimension depth, width, whatever one you want to call it, would have been 15 inches because this little quarter inch got turned down on both sides. So 15, and then this over here was 17 and a quarter, and we lost an inch on both sides for the uh, Pittsburgh seam. So that's really gonna be 15 and a quarter, but we gotta add two inches for our turn downs on our cap. So 17 by 17 and a quarter is the piece of metal we need. I typically use 26 gauge for all my sheet metal. Uh, 24 wasn't that much more expensive yesterday. And I mean, this thing's gonna be real close to the bedroom. So I've been trying to put cross breaks and stuff in it cause I, I didn't wanna really hear any banging going on in the middle of the night. Well, what I'm saying is I really don't wanna hear any ductwork noise in the middle of the night. <laughs> Uh, so I want the duct work to be quiet. So by thicker metal cross brakes, this is gonna be a high static area where it's coming straight out of the air handler up there and coming down to dampers that may or may not be open all the way when it happens. So I just wanted it to be quiet. Whew, that could have went sideways quick. So that fit and made it, you know, nice and square and sturdy, at least on the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over. Uh, the delivery driver just called, he's on his way, so I don't have much more time, but I'm gonna flip it over and uh, bend those top ones out, I think, because I, I made the inside of this duct receive the actual flanges on the air handler, so I need to bend them outward. Okay, so this is the top, and the reason I was able to bend those now is, remember we talked about the, having to keep the duct one inch away from the wood, so the hole I cut in the floor that I'll be cramming this thing up through is automatically gonna be an inch larger than this thing anyway. So uh, uh, therefore I can bend these out. If I was gonna be sticking it through a hole, if it was just a return or something, I would have wanted to wait and stuck it through and then bend them so it could have come back down and laid on top of the subfloor or whatever. But in this case, it's okay. I'm gonna, again, I think what I'm gonna do is, is fit this with some duct board down to the floor level or maybe below the floor level a little ways and then bend me up some more metal to cover the duct board and make the support that goes all the way down to the floor to uh, actually support the weight of the air handler and this duct. Okay, I've uh, got me some spray adhesive I was gonna try. Uh, I've cut me out some duct board pieces. Gosh, I hate this stuff, it's so itchy. And uh, I'm going to uh, adhere it or try to adhere it to the metal up here at the top and then I'll staple and tape it as well. But I'm going to uh, try this adhesive and see if I can do anything with it. It says if you spray it on both sides, it's kind of like a contact signal. If you spray it and let it tack, well, it'll 
be a permanent bond, but we'll see how that goes. I've sprayed these two sides and letting her tack up and we'll see how she sticks. Okay, I've got the uh, takeoffs put on and went ahead and put the rest of the mastic on. I had already ran it down, you know, below this insulation. So it could be drying yesterday when I was here. So that's sitting on a bucket and drying. Uh, the insulation glued on there real nice. It's, it's, it's stuck really well. But what I wanted to show you was this is what I had in mind for my floor riser is what I'm going to call it. See, this is an inch apart from the inside of this duct to out here. So as long as I cut the floor back, you know, before this insulation, which I'll have to to get it up through there, then the duct won't be, you know, closer than an inch to the wood anywhere. Plus it'll have that insulation in between it. So this is going to be setting basically right on the subfloor. And that's what will hold up the unit once it's all screwed together too. And uh, of course, uh, cover that insulation up so it's not out there. This insulation will go on down through the floor, which is about an inch and a half thick. And then I'll be able to wrap the rest of it down here with normal fiberglass duck wrap. And I can actually come all the way up to the bottom of the floor if I want to, you know. So I think this will be my best option here. Uh, I've got to put a uh, sensor in it for the uh, uh, discharge air for the zoning system there's not gonna be a good place to put it where it wouldn't be able to read anything radiant from the uh, you know heating elements up here because the damper's gonna be here and here. I guess I could stick it on one side of this and it might work, but I think I'd rather have it in the air stream because well, it's, it's more for uh, you know the zoning to be able to uh, slow the fan down and get you a real cool discharge temperature when you need to to de dehumidify and also in the winter time, let's say you're only calling for the little zone that's only got, you know, 400, 500 CFM of air going to it, that discharge temperature sensor, you can tell it what you want the maximum uh, or what you would like your target heat to be. And even though the heat pump's rated at 800 CFM, if you're putting 250, 300 CFM through it, it'll ramp the heat pump up and allow you to get more heat out of the air, uh, a warmer temperature. Once this thing dries, it'll actually go out to the house and get assembled in place. Okay, so I come by the house here to see how our door and stuff was gonna work. And from the face of this stud to the face of this stud is 22 inches, which you could fit a 22 inch, I mean a 20 inch door in. Uh, the reason I know that is Lowe's had a special order door that was 20 inches that they marked down to $65 or $40, I don't know. Yeah, I think I gave 40 for it. So a 20 inch door, you could easily fit it in a 22 inch opening. Normally you leave two and a half inches, but two inches is plenty. Uh, Cause you know, especially if you can get one side good and straight on the stud, the rest of it's just shim. So what I'm gonna do, this stud has been cut out for years because they put a return in right here they had scabbed a piece an inch and a half thick on over here. Just, it was just this long, so it wasn't doing anything to support anything. If you look up here, you can see that roll of nails there. That's a ceiling joist, which lands about right here. So if we go over two feet, two feet, we have another ceiling joist that's landing about right here. So truly there's been nothing holding that thing up for ever since the heat pump was installed the first time. I'm not even gonna put a, a true header on this door because like I say, it's not had a header all these other years and it's not went anywhere. In fact, of course I jacked the house up, did all this, picked the wall up. So uh, we'll see what it looks like when I get the door cut out, but it'll be a lot easier not to have to put a header in. I can just uh, you know, scab me in a couple of pieces of two by four and put the door in. Well, we got her out of there and that's what it was. It was a stud or the plate goes all the way across the top. So. In light of that, I'm not going to try to cut any more wall out. I'm going to, I'll cut this one down to the right length, which will be what it is all the way down to the opening minus an inch and a half. And I'll make two more just like him. I'll nail them in first on both sides. And then I'll stick this one back up on his nails and drive it home with a hammer and uh, cut me a plate across there and just screw it up into the bottoms of those and it'll be good forever. 
possibility I might run into trouble right down here because the door is gonna, you know, be on this side and open out. But you could have a crack down here that you'd see that you didn't have the maple flooring down like the rest of this is. Uh, I've got a plan for that too. If I, of course, I could cut me a probably a maple board and stain it close enough that it wouldn't matter. But in this little closet here, it's wide enough that I could take a piece of flooring out of it if I need to in the back of it and put it out here where it would be, you know, more likely to be seen. But we'll worry about that later. So I'm going to cut this plate out down here and uh, get it out of the way completely. And then I may go over there. I've got to take out, looks like at least three of those uh, strips of hardwood flooring over there, but I may just take it out the width of the closet. So, you know, make a plunge cut through them there and then just pop them up. So we'll see how that goes and I'll get back with you. Got that plate cut out. How in the world did we get along without one of these little guys? I mean, that's <laughs> so easy and quick. In fact, the original one of these that I had, I got with a kit one time and uh, it quit a couple of weeks ago and uh, I ordered one that night. I mean, I couldn't live without it. I love these things. Okay, here's that stud that we took out and I marked hall side on it before I actually pulled it down out of there. And we can see where we cut the drywall because the, uh, the saw went on in there and, you know, messed with it. So it's basically 10 and 7 eighths. So we just need to take an inch and a half off of that so we'd have room for our, our new flat header. So that'll be what, about right here somewhere. And I'm gonna use this one to make me two more. So I'll have something to go on the sides. Okay, we got our little short studs back in, and just to make you uh, sticklers happy, I put extra screws in that board, so it can help hold up that one joist right up there. It's within about an inch of the edge of it now, so I think we're going to be fine. I'll measure this uh, width and go cut a piece, and I'll just screw it straight up into those. I put a little mark there at uh, center, 16, 16 inches from center of that one, so I can... Uh, Make sure and get that guy in the right place. Closet door. I will, uh, I'll probably go make a pan before I uh, cut that floor out just to make sure I get everything right where I want it. But I guess that's really the next step because I need to start my duct work right here and go both ways. Well, the sun is about to come up on a Saturday morning. Got here at the shop early this morning. I don't have any calls today that I have to do, so I'm going to, uh, God, I gotta clean this mess up. I'm going to uh, make me a little drain pan to go under that unit out there. Uh, like I say it may not work as a drain pan, but it'll keep the water kind of funneled toward the crawl space, if nothing else, even if it can't seal it up around the middle. But what I've done, I need a, I decided last night I needed a 22 by 25 drain pan so I've cut me a piece of metal and I've made it five inches bigger in both directions so I should have 27 by 30 here and the reason that is I want the drain pan to be two inches which two plus two is four but I'm going to turn down a half inch all the way around it to make a hem so it won't be sharp in case you know you're up in the middle of the night and you go work on your heat barefooted you don't want to step over on this thing and cut yourself so what I'm going to do I'll chop these corners out right here so I can hem it and then We'll uh, get started bending it. Okay, so now that we've bent us a little half inch hem all the way around, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come in two inches on all corners and uh, get me a mark so I can bend it, uh, bend the edges up. And then uh, what I usually do is bend the uh, short edges first. I just bend them up part way there just to get me a crease started that I can easily bend later. Uh, and then once I do the two short sides, uh, you know, 20 or 30 degrees, I'll turn it around and do the long sides, you know, all the way up to 90 degrees. Of course, the reason you only bend these up part way is because it'd be tough to get it back under the, the brake again in order to uh, clamp it down and, and do your long sides. And then you end up with something like this. You can see you've got these long sides, which it's not much longer in this particular pan, but 
you've got them bent all the way up. And then your short sides here, you've got a nice crease to help you for what, what comes next. And what we gotta do is get these little corners started bending inward and kind of think about a miter right across this 45 degrees here that you wanna kind of bend it in so that it comes into the middle of the pan and allows this side to come up. So I'm gonna grab, uh, I think them benders are a little big. I'm gonna see if I've got a power needle nose or maybe a smaller set of benders and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna see if I can get it started with these guys, but see how I've got it clamped down here and I'm right at the corner there with the bottom side of these benders and it's heading, you know, kind of aimed toward the corner down there. And if I lift these upward, it's going to start creasing that, hopefully along that 45 degree line. See that little crease becoming more visible? And that's what you're going for. You want to get that thing started uh, as a crease there so that you can keep bending it. I'm going to uh, lay the phone down and get it worked out a little bit and I'll show you. You could, uh, once you get it started, you can bend a lot of it by hand. But what I'll do, uh, now that I got that one bent up that far, I'll come over here and get this side so it'll start letting this relax. And then we'll start pushing this up as we close these up. And then eventually you get this to fold in on itself and you get this thing, you know, you want to get it back up vertical, which I'm not quite there. Uh, you can actually set it up on the table here and, you know, use your hands to keep forming on it. You can use your hand benders or if you've got a finger break, you can measure and pull out a finger and stick it in there and actually finish it off with that. So I'm going to do that other side and it'll be time to get out of here. It's almost daylight. And I'm going to call that good enough for my house. So I'll take this thing out. Like I say, probably what I'll do is get my hole cut in my subfloor, set the pan down where I want it, just go underneath and mark it, cut the center out of the, uh, or the hole out of the pan here. And then I'll just uh, push that guy up through it. So again, it covers the floor up, gives you a place to catch some water. And, and if I can get it sealed pretty good around here, it'll probably be fine. And like I say, if it does, you know, ever get water in it and leak, uh, at least if I push it all over to right here, there's more chance of it going in the crawl space than into the uh, finished part of the house. So worth a few minutes to bend that. Okay, so we've got here and we've... Uh, cut out the hardwood floor. What I tried to do is cut it to the back of where I'm gonna build walls. And so the pan will be setting against this sheetrock. I'm not gonna put any sheetrock inside this closet, just on the side that's finished in the bedroom closet here. But so we've left room for the wall and then we gotta leave room for that flange to come in here and set down uh, to hold up the unit before we make our hole through here. So we've done is marked out the opening for the duct and insulation that has to stick up through here and started sawing on it i'll have to do the corners with my little saw that i can't live without but uh, i was going to get this hole cut out first and that way i can i can see the joist underneath and know exactly how much of it i have to remove and head off in order to not be in the way down there so I'll get this uh, chunk of wood cut out of here and we'll figure out what to do with that joist. Okay, so we're down underneath. I put me a jack that was still under here from the jacking up the center support beam down through here when I first started all this mess. And I've cut all the way through it over here and I've cut that far over here. So the rest of it, my saw went up against the uh, floor. So I'm gonna have to cut the rest of it. I'm gonna start with the sawzall and uh, probably finish with the little saw. Okay, so we've got this this one here headed off. Uh, of course, this one is actually carrying some weight, so I've got joist hangers, joist nails, and I don't have any common nails long, so I just use screws for that part. It don't really do any shear there. It's just trying to hold it all together. And of course, I didn't even use any joist hangers over here. This is more blocking than support because that joist is kind of levered as far back as it was out this way. So I'll go upstairs and get that piece of subfloor put back in and I guess start cutting on the drain pan. 
Okay, so we've got the hole cut. We've got the tar paper down. We've got the plate down for the wall just to make sure I don't get the drain pan in the wrong place. And the reason it's offset to this side, Sam, I need a place to bring my line set up through without it being in front of the door and, you know, not being in the pan. So that's why that's that way. So I'm going to go down and see if I can, uh, I'm gonna confirm I got this pan marked correctly. We marked it before we did all this other work here. And then I'm going to try to put that uh, duct piece up through here and see if I can figure out some way to hang it up here, you know, take some weight off and uh, get it hung up here so I can still move it a little bit, but not have to try to hold it up all the time until I can get it figured out. Okay, so we've got it hanging down there with just a piece of duct strap underneath it. Went ahead and drilled that three inch hole over here for my line set. You see, I'm right close to the joist there. That was part of the plan's reason this wall landed where it did. So now it's time to cut the hole in the pan. I was thinking about bending, you know, bending the pan up, but I mean, the corners are still gonna be open even if you do that. So I don't think it would help and it might actually even hinder me to have a flat surface there. So I'm just gonna cut a rectangle hole out in that pan and slip it down over here and see if it fits. I'm trying out this Lexel sealant. I've seen people use it, but uh, I've never actually seen it in the store and Lowe's had it. Smells a lot like our pain glue, you know, like you used to put your model cars together with. But, uh, so what we've done, we've picked that up because I had it hanging there. We slipped this up under it on both sides and getting ready to do the last piece here. And once I get this sandwiched in there, I'll actually put some screws in everything. So I think it's going to work okay. And if it'll hold me up, it'll hold anything up. <laughs> All right, she's all screwed together and screwed down to the floor and got that Lexel on everything. Well, that stuff's sticky. It's already starting to cure, but I'll put some uh, foam tape, you know, the self-adhesive on one side tape on top of this before I ever set the unit down on it. And then if you want to, you know, stick a screw in the front, you can, but it'll probably hold itself at that point. So that gives us, uh, you know, gets it up off the ground some. Walk around here. Gets it up off the ground, or if you have to get down here and work on the electric heater, you know, you're not laying down on the floor looking up. And then again, that gives me room to put my discharge temperature sensor right down here too. So uh, I guess with that in place, there's nothing stopping me from starting on the duct work under the house. Okay, I'm impatient and can't wait because that's just the way I am. I'm gonna set the unit up on there and see how it looks. So I went ahead and put a little bit of that foam tape on it. I'm going to, uh, Set her up there and see if she rocks or anything. All right, she fits in there. And see, we've got plenty of room down here to service it. Or bring your wire up right here and go in the bottom. Like I say, the line set's gonna come in over here and it can come up and come over here and make my connections. Uh, drain comes out here. I assume I'll try to take it over and go down the same, same hole. But, I ought to be able to blow down through there all right. And then we can do the return stuff later. I'm gonna put a media filter right here on top and then uh, we'll do a transition and go back to a, a more of a rectangle duct to go up through the ceiling. Well, I'm here this morning putting together my trunk. Um, this is just gonna be on that zone on the master bedroom side, it's 12 inch. Most of the air comes off of that end because of the master bedroom. So I'm just gonna make it all, I'm not gonna step it down there at the very end to 10 inch. If you've got a real short uh, run like this, it doesn't even matter if you step it down from what I understand. So I'm going to, what I've done, I've marked, I've actually marked where I'm gonna put hangers and where my, my actual uh, takeoffs go. I'm going to go ahead and cut the holes with, for the takeoffs. And then I'm gonna temporarily wrap this insulation. And since I just have stuff on two sides, it's actually gonna kind of be on the top of both sides. I think what I'll do is maybe stick this insulation on here because this 48 inch goes right around this 12 inch in that long piece in that direction. So I may temporarily fasten it and cut my holes through the insulation where my takeoffs will go. 
and I'll cut one hole lined up with the takeoffs and one hole, you know, wherever it lands. That way I can easily put that insulation back on uh, without having to overcut the takeoffs or anything. I'll show you what I mean when I get to that point, but actually what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut these two holes or four holes, five holes, and uh, get that insulation cut out and laid back to the side. And then I'm gonna put mastic on everything. I've got mastic tape on my seams, uh, but I like the mastic, those air tights too. I mean, they're, they're called air tight, but you know, there's places they can leak. <laughs> so I like to put mastic on them as well. So we'll get them stuck on and mastic on them so they can be drying. And then our insulation will be laying here ready to go on whenever it's dry. And this will do, you know, one whole zone of the house on this end. And uh, in the meantime, I'll try to put that out of the way somewhere while it's drying so that I can uh, start on the other side. Okay, here's what I was talking about. I, I made one of my cuts right here at the seam. So, and they happen to, of course, line up down through here. All you got to do is remember what side you put the tape on, and I used the back side. So that way, when you roll over to the other side, you can slip your, your insulation over the takeoffs on this side, wrap it around and tape it up, and you don't have to, you know, make them long slits or anything. So it takes a few more minutes, but when it's your own house, you can do that. And the little tip that's worked for me is when you have to put a, uh, take off close to the end of a round pipe those radiuses aren't bent perfect i mean they, they only come one size so 12 inch seems to be a pretty good fit i mean for most of them i don't know what they actually you know plan that radius for but you can tweak them a little bit before you take off the sticky and make them fit better but anytime you put something like that on here and screw it down close to the end of a round pipe you're you're apt to distort it and those dampers that this is going to slip up on are made out of spiral so they're pretty rigid so I just grabbed a, a 90 I had laying here, any fitting would work, and crammed it up into the end to try to hold the pipe a little more round while I do this so that when I'm pushing on it, I'm not, you know, flattening it out and egg shaping it, which might make it harder to put together when I've, you know, got this 13 foot piece under the house. Okay, before I get that mastic all over me, I'm gonna go ahead and put some hanging wires on where I've marked out where the joists are. And we'll have, uh, it's four on this piece. They're every four feet until the very end down there, and then it's short. But what I'm going to do, instead of cutting way too much cable, even though <laughs> this is something that was left over from a job and I've got tons of it, I'm going to run down in the uh, crawl space right quick and see how much uh, wire I'll need on each one of these uh, hangers so I don't, you know, cut it way too long. Or even worse, way too short. Or even worse than that would be like maybe an inch too short because then you'd be like, darn. The easiest thing to measure off of down here is going to be the uh, beam because it's parallel on it. So if it's not straight, then the uh, duct would look even worse probably. So I've got about 15 and 27, which on 12 inch duct, six inches, 21 inches to the center. And that mostly checks out up there. So I can just come along wherever I'm going to put a hanger. I can measure off of the beam Put me a marker at 21 and go up and put me an eye bolt in. Well, we got a little bit of duck hanging up under here this morning. Uh, took what we made. Missy came to help me carry it down here and hang it up. So we're moving right along. So it's all hanging on that end. And we've got the first 10 feet going this way. Here's the way those little hangers work. Um, basically it it's directional. You can see that arrow pointing down. Uh, one of the holes is big, or the hole is bigger on one end than the other, and that's the end you actually insert. So you run it, you run your wire coming off the duct through it first one way, and then come up and go over whatever you're holding it with and come back down, and you just pull that through, and you can release it with this little kit right there. If you pull down on that, that'll actually take the tension off so you can move it up or down or, you know, adjust it. Of course, you can tighten it up, but you to release it, you got to push that down. So they work pretty good. Get them sturdy. That makes it real easy when you're working by yourself. If you, you know, as far as trying to get it adjusted right, you don't have to be so critical uh, when you first hang it up because you can come back here and jack it up a little bit because sometimes this stuff's hard to get together by yourself. And here's the last piece. Got it put together and all sealed up while that's drying. 
Uh, it's the end of the day anyway, so I'm going to call it quits and come back in the morning, hopefully, and insulate that, hang it up, and uh, then what I may do, I need to do a lot of cleanup under there. I may go ahead and wire up the air handler and turn the fan on so it can blow us some, you know, air under there all the time while we're cleaning. Uh, never hurts to have too much fresh air in the crawl space when you're working under there. Getting ready to hang this last piece of duct and it was gonna, this light right here was gonna be real close to it or in the way or something. So it's awful dark back in here anyway. So we went ahead and stuck us in some LED lights and we've got them run back to this last box right here. Got everything hooked up except this wire. So what I'm doing is pulling the wire out of this last light. I'm gonna route it over here, put in one more light and flip them back on and it should look like daylight back here. We're gonna see if the lights will come on and give us some needed illumination. Give her a try. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, uh, before we put this piece of duct in here in the way, we're gonna go ahead, I brought a dolly. I've tried to drain that water heater a couple of times and uh, the drain keeps plugging up with lime. It's an old, old heater. So we're gonna go ahead and try to wrestle it out of here. And maybe pick up some of this other trash before we uh, get this duct in our way. Okay, we picked up all the big pieces and got that water tank out of here. It was over half full because when we laid it down on its side, it started running out the uh, running out the top when they were level. So that was a chore, but uh, got to keep that cable wire right there for now because that's what's hooked up to my Wi-Fi. And then all these uh, PEX lines are just hanging here in order to water test the plumbing that's upstairs in the wall. Uh, once I have heat and everything, I'll I'll come down here and do the real plumbing and tie everything up and insulate it and hang it with proper hangers. But we've got everything out of our way enough. We've already put up our eye bolts where they go. So we are, there's one. We're coming all the way down to here. It almost goes to the end of the house. <laughs> of course it didn't have to, you could run that flex, you know, longer, but I got the metal duct, might as well use it. And keep the flex runs to a minimum this way. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not afraid of flex, I like flex. Uh, as long as you don't try to, you know, exceed the limits of flex. For instance, this six inch flex, I'm gonna be putting about 65 CFM through each one of them, so that'll be no problem. All righty, that's the last piece of that one. I'll have to uh, tape these seams and get this insulation fitted together, but. All the trunk is in. Like I say, what we're probably gonna do, we'll have to, we got new flooring in this end of the house, so nothing's ever been cut. We're gonna put these at both doors, one to the garage and one to the outside. So what we'll probably do now is figure out how to get the wire ran back down there to where the air handler is located. And I wanna get it wired up and turn it on and let it have some air change under here. Uh, we probably got about 1,500 square feet, around five foot tall, a little taller maybe, but that's, you know, 7,500, 8,000 cubic feet. So we can turn the thing over about every eight to 10 minutes probably and uh, get a lot less humidity, a lot less humidity in here. Okay, the trunk insulation is buttoned up and we have our flow. Got the air handler on. I think it's putting out 825 CFM right now. It's only a two ton air handler, but I think if I change a jumper, I can get it to go up to 11, maybe 1050 or 1100. So I may do that just to, I don't have any static on it to speak up with all these ducks off down here. So it'll just allow it to, uh, you know, get a lot of air change down here in this crawl space. And, we can get down here when I have time next time and start cleaning it out and maybe uh, getting some of these other wires tied up, you know, where they go. Um, but all in all, I'm happy the trunk is done. I think I see a, a, a way I can get heat on now before cold weather, so I'm not going to uh, stress about it too much. We won't have any real cold weather for another month or so, I guess. That's just a strap I had up there holding those temporary water lines up temporarily while I was doing this, but 
anyway, uh, the uh, flex runs will be relatively easy. You can see there used to be one here. I'll have to pull these old hangers down, but it'll go from that takeoff to this hole. So those should be pretty easy. I've got one, two, three, four, I think four, and then two in the bathroom, six, that'll be cut new and through the floor. The rest of them will go back where they used to be. I was cutting a uh, supply in up here next to the front door. And after I had Missy bring me all these different tools before I got through, she said, you need to take a video of how thick that floor is. <laughs> so we got them pine boards for subfloor and they start, they're almost like seven eighths. And then you've got that uh, particle board on top of that. And then this maple on top of that. So it's about two and three eighths inches. So that's the only one I have to cut like that though. The, and the other new ones go in the kitchen and the bathrooms and that's all just got a you know the pine boards plus a new subfloor of a osb or plywood so this will be the worst one but it's done now i went ahead it's nice out there today so i've gone ahead and pulled that little air handle out like i talked about and i'm using my scraps as you can tell by the colors to go ahead and fill this in i'm insulating it first and then putting that in that's just to keep you know the fan starting up or the relays clicking in this zone panel if the closet door is open you might hear it in the bedroom at night so i'll go ahead and stick some insulation in these walls i already had it in fact i don't see a date on it here but i think it's 2018 is the date on this particular roll of insulation i had laying around somewhere so i'm going to get this crammed in there um, put the other two boards up and try to go ahead and take these corners you know put a first coat on it and put it together uh, it's going to get cold tonight so i'll probably go ahead and put this back in it took me all of about 10 minutes to take it out so probably take me 20 to put it back <laughs> but i'll uh, i'll get that going and we will uh, uh hopefully get some real finishing done here soon that's my ghost pictures well, it's a very nasty day today. I think they're getting tornadoes down south and we're just getting a wet mist. It's cold. It's just, just nasty. I'd rather have snow, which is coming soon, I'm sure. Anyway, I went ahead and pulled this air handler out for what I hope is the last time and went ahead and painted the uh, inside of this closet. You can tell you just got one coat on that tape, but again, it's just a closet for that unit. And once all that's in here in the ductwork, you ain't gonna see 90% of it. But what I'm gonna do before I pop this thing back in there, I'm kind of letting the walls dry a little bit because I know I'm gonna touch them. I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, discharge temperature sensor probe into the plenum down there. I've got to make the uh, hole a little bigger. I drilled this hole originally, but it's got to have room for that nut to go back into this case. So I'm going to uh, make that hole a little bigger screw this in and put that air handler in for what I hope is the last time. I need to get the heat pump on. I'm using straight electric heat and uh, the way energy rates have went up, I'm probably gonna have to choose between <laughs> keeping this place warm or eating if it keeps it up. Okay, getting ready to paint this bedroom. I thought I'd go ahead and put the return uh, in the ceiling first in case I screwed up and had to uh, do some, uh, you know, body work, but this thing is 14 by 14. I made it, I think, 14 and a quarter by 14 and a quarter. I'm going to put that kind of a drill on it. So what I've done, I've come out off the wall four inches parallel to the wall. That's what those two marks are, just the width of that thing twice. And I took a square and made me a line over here a little bit off of where that uh, roof uh, ceiling joist is. So I cut two holes on that line and measured back to make sure that joist was square to the wall because you just never know. And it is, so what I'll do is uh, flip this guy over where he's good and square and I'll stick him up against the ceiling over against that joist and out 14 and a quarter inches and out 14 and a quarter inches this way, I'll get me a mark and uh, cut it out with my little vibratory saw. 
I've already went up and made sure there wasn't any wires in the way and kicked the old uh, dusty loose insulation out of the way so it wouldn't be raining down on me. So I should be in good shape. I'll get that marked and cut out. And after a little dust, we have us a hole. What I'll do next is uh, I'll frame that in. Of course, we have, a, we have a board on one side. I'll have to run a couple across and hit this other ceiling joist over here and then put a short piece going this way. And that way you'll have some wood on all four sides of it. Uh, it'll not only make it good and sturdy, but it'll uh, kind of help to seal it up too and I can caulk around it. Okay, we've got our framed in. Pull it down, flush it up and screw it in. Okay, so she's in there and I can go ahead and paint this ceiling. I wanted to do that before I, uh, you know, paint it obviously so I could tell where these joists were easily. I'm gonna try to put the rest of these returns in so I can get that ductwork done up in the attic before it starts getting too hot. So I've cut one in here in the den, uh, just right over here in the corner. Just tried to pull air out of this space, but not knowing for sure. I mean, it's a big space. If you pull it out of here anywhere, it's gonna come back to it. So I'm gonna put it right there. So that'll be a fairly short run. It'll pretty much just have to hop across that hall bath to get down here to this end. And then I'm gonna pull another 16 by 16 with a 12 inch duct out of this big room here in the front. This originally was a formal living room. Uh, to somebody else in the future, it may be a dining room, but to me, it'll probably end up being maybe an office. So I'm thinking about putting on some uh, French doors over here and maybe even putting a door there that opens into this room. I could shut this place off if I needed to, but got the 16 by 16 hole cut. You can see I just stayed right beside whatever wood was there. And this one worked out because it almost wound up centered with the, the fan that'll eventually be there in the window. So I'll have to uh, cut me some wood and frame that in. Then I'll put this guy in. And of course, I, uh, I won't put the grill on this one yet because I still got a little work to do in here. Well, it's raining again. So I'm out here in the, <laughs> what used to be a garage before I filled it up with stuff, uh, getting this plenum ready to put in for my return so I can get this heat pump running. But I picked up this door yesterday, got a good deal on it at a kind of like a, I don't know, some kind of wind to close out store. But I'm gonna put that in the kitchen there where we've got that solid door now to let us some light in on this end. So what I'm doing here is just, I'm gonna, I got four sides of this thing and I'm gonna have four ducts hooked to it. It's just gonna be basically bumped up through the floor uh, or the ceiling, the ceiling will be down here somewhere. And uh, I'll get this thing, I'm gonna cut the hose make the insulation for it, take it upstairs and put it together because uh, I'll never get it up through that little stairwell there if I put these takeoffs on it. Okay, got all the individual holes cut where we'll put a, you know, the stick on takeoffs. And I put a couple of pieces of angle right down here. Basically up in the attic, I have that hole framed out the same thickness as the ceiling joist. So I want this to slide down through that hole and stop right here. Probably won't screw this um, when you're putting the next piece of duct on down to an air handler. It'd be nice to have a little bit of movement, but this will keep it from going any lower than this. Uh, that way it'll take the weight off of you. You know, if you needed to push it up a little bit, you could. But all I'm going to do now is insulate. I'm going to make me a little cube of insulation that'll stick down over this down to this point because I can't go any lower. It's in the framing at that point. Got my fast internet and my Pandora going in here. So makes it a little nicer. Just have to turn it off the video. Okay, so that was pretty easy. You just basically wrap this around. You can see I've got a flap here. I cut, cut the insulation off the bottom of the paper here so that we could make this flap that we could then staple and tape. Okay, so the holes are cut. I slid it down to the bottom so it'll be able to put it on. And I wrote up here that this was the back. And I know what the back means. It's actually the back of the air handler. So that'll help me when I get up there in that dark attic and have to get ready to stick it down on there. So now all we'll do is just lift this whole blanket off of there, fold it up a little bit, and it'll be ready to carry up. 
And this is why we couldn't put all the takeoffs on downstairs because we'd never get it up into the attic through these stairs. These stairs that feel like they're made out of toothpicks and dreams. I'm gonna push this on up in there and I may lay it. I got a board right over there that was looks like a tabletop or something. I may lay it down there and put the other two on while I can stand on this ladder and not have to be squatted down balancing on a two by six. So she's up here and put together. Now I gotta do is lug it way back through yonder. You can see some of the uh, flex duct I put in already. Well, we made it back here. Now we gotta stick it down through that hole and hope it fits. All right, she fit down through there, no problem. I'm going to start shortening up these ducts and getting them taped and strapped on there. And then I'll walk back down and get that piece of insulation and put back on it. So I'm just gonna do that for the next three ducts. I've got a 12 and a 12 that goes one to the den area and one to the living room area. I've got a 10 going to the master bedroom area because I have some larger ducts in there plus a bathroom that has to come back that way. And then I've got an eight right here on the front that will goes over here and splits off and goes to two sevens in the smaller bedrooms. So I'll get them put on and I won't try to do anything with that insulation until I come up and put the other insulation on while, so I have good room to work. Well, they're all connected, taped and strapped. I'm going to drag my scraps out of here and I guess grab that piece of insulation and stick it on here. Okay, so all I did was just stick that down on there and wrap it around the ducts mostly and pull those uh, insulation sleeves on the ducts up against it. That'll keep me, uh, you know, from losing too much heat right now. And again, I've got a lot of stuff I need to do up here. I'll, I'll actually foam around those and break that old insulation back down. And then I'm planning on putting a bunch more new insulation in on top of a lot of this. I'll get me some marks on these vertical members so I can tell where I'm doing because you get back here spraying that stuff you don't have any idea where you are after it covers the whole ground but I'm gonna like I say put a bunch of insulation in here and hopefully it'll uh, uh you know turn out to be a pretty good efficient house with that 20 sear heat pump okay there she is sticking down through the ceiling so what I'll have to do is make a piece that'll come down to the top of this air handler I stuck that little uh, zoning board up there just to have so I could see, you know, what would, you know, be out of its way as far as being able to, you know, see it and wire it and things like that. So now that that's in, though, I can measure this and go build it. Okay, I'm here at the shop. Uh, stop by and I'm going to start making this little thing here for the uh, return on that top of that air handler. So I took my dimensions off of my computer over there and just wrote them on a printout that I did right quick. And you can see, I mean, it's kind of like weird dimensions because I think I started out two inches tall right here. Of course, we got this one inch flat. But by the time you offset this thing a quarter inch, it grows a little bit to get out to this point. So it's three and an eighth, eight and an eighth, 12 and an eighth. I didn't even measure this. Um, I just worked in from both ends, but Looks pretty close to eight and an eighth. So I've got this first piece cut out and I used uh, my little scratch tool. This will be our one inch flange on the bottom that will go to the air cleaner. You can kind of see our little quarter inch flange on the sides, both of these, all of these. <laughs> and then the top, that's just where it goes up into the actual, uh, let's see in this case, I'll have to fold this over. It'll be a, uh, uh, you know, a, a piece of drive to hold it together because I did that on the side so I'd have room to cram it in there. So what I'll do here is I will notch out the areas that we don't want to bend the flange on, like up here and down here. And then in these corners, I'll have to notch them out as well. And we'll go ahead and uh, cross break this guy and bend our little quarter inch flanges. And then I went ahead and um, Lay this down on top of this piece and marked it out so I'll have, you won't have to measure it to cut the next piece. I was getting ready to notch this piece out like I had done everywhere else, but you know, this is going to be sticking out three quarters of an inch back past the air handler. And I mean, this doesn't have to be bulletproof because, um, you know, if it sucks a little air in, it's on the goods, you know, the 
back side of the filter and it's coming out of that closet. But I can actually, if I want to, I could turn a quarter inch flange in for that three quarters of an inch and go ahead and Pittsburgh seam the other piece and make it good and strong back in that back corner. So I think I'll go ahead and try it. I started cutting this and I thought I'd better show it to you first. Basically, your quarter inch will come down to the back corner and go back in until it hits the, the back of the air cleaner, which is three quarters of an inch right here. And then this right here is going to be my flange that bends up and sets on top of the air cleaner. This is the back of the air cleaner right now. So I need that quarter inch flange to be able to bend just like this one and go into my Pittsburgh on that back piece. So I'll cut across this line, cut the corner off here, and then I can start bending it up. And what I usually do on 90 degree corners is just lop the whole corner off because you're going to bend this piece up and this piece up. So you need that you know, out of the way. And that kind of sort of looks like what we wanted. We've got our drive made on the end. We've got our little quarter inch flanges on the front and the back. That will go into the Pittsburgh. We have a flange bent outward, which will go down on top of that air cleaner. And that's that little weird corner at the back I was talking about. It's probably more trouble than it's worth to Pittsburgh seam around this corner. But might as well try it. So this one's bent. I'll cut that one out and bend it the same except backwards. And of course, anytime you're cutting out a pattern that you made by laying something on top of another piece and drawing it, always leave your line or cut your line out, leave it on the scrap piece so that this piece will wind up being exactly the same size as your other piece. Because if you cut in the middle of the line or you know on this edge of the line, it's going to be a little bigger. Okay, we wound up with bookends. So now you can actually use this piece to measure your front and the back because, you know, these, these angles actually changed a little bit. Uh, that three and an eighth probably went down to three. And then I would imagine that eight and an eighth, it dropped at least an eighth off. The way it's got that inside and outside corner. So anyway, that's probably what I'll do is just measure this up and start on my front and back. Okay, I've got the front piece roughed out here that I was going to run the Pittsburgh seams on. What I've got marked here, if we run this thing through the Pittsburgh right now, uh, we're going to have to notch out here in order to bend it. And you don't want to be cutting on that Pittsburgh seam. It's thick. So what I've done, I've come in an inch and a quarter at every one of my bends and got me a little tick mark there. I don't have a scribe that does an inch and a quarter, so I'll just measure it. So I'm going to actually cut a little V-notch back to that inch and a quarter depth. And that'll get you just through the Pittsburgh seam material so that it makes it easy to bend and, and manage when you get done. Okay, so everything is notched out. And we'll take it over here and run it through the Pittsburgh. I'm not going to cross break it yet because it's kind of hard to get to go through that machine when it's not flat. We can cross break it afterwards. side okay uh, so here's what it looks like when it came out this is the inside this is the outside of course this little area here is only going to be two inches tall so we don't need to cross break in it i don't think it would ever make any noise but going up that slope i think we should probably cross break them here and this big piece in the front and you can you can do it on the finger break by taking out some fingers to where you're not setting down on your seam but um when you've got a piece of cardboard like this, you can actually, uh, you know, break it right here on the table. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. Now, put cardboard under it. You can just lay it down, get you a straight edge, and you can use something like a screwdriver to push as you, you know, scribe along there, and it'll give you a cross break. It, it's kind of hard. you got to push several times, and it's kind of cutting into the metal when you do it. Or... Since this is going to be seen, I'm not going to insulate this. When you open the closet door, it's going to be looking at you right in the, right in the teeth. So uh, I went ahead and marked these so they'd be somewhat straight. And I'm going to use this tool from Hillmore. It's a uh, 
just a cross brake tool. And basically it's got little wheels on it, almost like a tubing cutter, but more blunt. And all you have to do is, uh, you know, press down on it on a, something soft underneath like cardboard or carpet, or I guess you could do it on the ground outside and you just roll it along and it'll make the cross brake for you. So I'm going to have to lay the phone down because I want to use both hands. I want this to look pretty good anyway. So just like that, we have two pretty good looking cross brakes. Again, just roll it from the back side. I grabbed this piece of scrap up out of the floor just so I could try to show you how good it does. It's just, it's, it's pretty heavy piece of equipment, but um, you got to push on it. But if you just push and roll, it makes your cross brakes for you. So this is really handy. I recommend it. I think it's a, uh, it's less than a hundred dollars. I think it's about seventy dollars, maybe. But it, it just, uh, just really, really works great. It's a good idea. I never had even thought about it. If you don't have a finger brake, you can actually use that tool to score your material where you want to bend it, and then you'll just have to work it by hand. But it, you know, it, it gives you a place to start bending, so it does a pretty good job. But since we have this finger brake here, I'll just use it to. Uh, to bend this little guy, try to, I'm just gonna have to bend something and then when we put it against the side, we'll have to uh, make it fit. And then you just wrestle it in there and bend it over. I'll, uh, I'll beat on it some more once I have it more stable. It's kind of floppy right now, but you can see you get a pretty good seam on the inside like this. So I'll go ahead and put this other side on and then we'll make the make the back. Since we got that bottom piece on there, it's a little more stable and I can get you a video of what it looks like when you get it down into the seam before you start bending it over. But it a, makes a nice sturdy seam and no screws or rivets. And like I say, something like this is exposed. It kind of looks nice. Remember what I said about this little corner probably being more trouble than it's worth? I'm about afraid to notch this out. I'm afraid it'll get tangled up in the machine because you're gonna have this little tab here that can get distorted and cause all kind of havoc. But what I'm going to do, just to see, I'm gonna go ahead and run it through the machine and then I'm gonna to try to cut that after the fact. These look pretty stout and we'll, we'll see if we can do it. Hey, it'll either work or it won't. Okay, so she's all bent up, but as you can see right here, got about 37 and a half layers to cut through in order to be able to bend this thing 90 degrees like we're going to have to do, but I think we can do it. If not, we'll get the saws all off the truck. Those things are nice. They cut right through it. So we'll take it over and fold this, make our one big cross break, and we'll be ready to try to bang it the rest of it together. And there she is all ready to go. <laughs> We'll see what happens with this little piece, but hey, it's probably better than it would have been if I didn't do anything right there. Those little guys worked out pretty good. Um, this will actually be laying on top of that air cleaner and it's got a flange coming back in this way. And what I've done a lot of times with that is you can reach through the opening of the air cleaner and put you a piece of S-lock across this, kind of seal it up. And of course, these will be on the outside. I can screw them right down into the top of the air cleaner. So that's what she looks like and hopefully she'll fit. We'll find out tomorrow. I ain't going back out there tonight. Besides Missy just texted and the, her, her high school that she went to, which is one of the four county schools we have here in Carter County, just won the state championship in basketball. So. She's gonna be real happy about that. I might even get a pizza. Well, good morning. It's snowing outside. Got me a little supplemental heat running. Got this thing turned off. Uh, I just pulled the air cleaner off the top here and I am going to try to just kind of get this thing lined up and put up there first and then kind of slit the air handler, you know, back in there. So I think that'll be my easiest bet by myself. So. I'll see how it goes. Well, she fit, at least that part. 
Now I gotta get that air cleaner to go in between these two. I gave it a little bit of persuasion. Actually, that was just to beat on the drive with to help keep some tension on it once I got it started because I had to put that S-lock back there in last. I couldn't do them both at once. Okay, what I think I'll do right here, because uh, I've got these gaps on both sides, of course I can tape it after I screw it, and this ain't exactly where it's going yet. It'll, it'll pull back there. But I think what I'm gonna do is take a piece of S-lock and cut it to the width of the inside of this media cleaner. I'll slide it out a little bit and get the S-lock started on here and just slip it back and just have a piece of S-lock across the front. Of course, I'll put that piece of S-lock along the back, although I do have room to get in there and screw if I wanted to. And then I'll just screw these sides down and that'll be complete. Okay, there she is with the S-lock on the front. I just screwed the sides and I'm not gonna worry about these little holes unless they whistle. If they whistle, I'll put some clear caulk in them. I did tape the bottom on both sides because it's a, you know, critical that air doesn't leak down here. And I think it's pretty tight across the front here. Uh, put a new filter in. So this thing has foam on it too. So I think by the time this little guy goes in there and snaps, she should be pretty good. So it'll be sucking from each room now, or the rooms that we put it in. I need to jump up there and bend my drive over and finish it up. It's drawing us pictures now, like with an Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs>